this is ghetto i got all my other nails i need to fill in why does this have fur on it hey guys welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome to my channel it's nicole for those who don't know and for today's video back to the sit down videos my last two videos were like we're in a sit down video but this one is gonna be a sit down video so as you can tell from the title today is gonna be about brazilian waxes i mentioned the Every time I'm doing a video, there's always an interruption, so I'll wait. Oh, so he just parked his car. And he gonna blast music that loud. And don't care. If you are watching this video, you have thought about getting a Brazilian wax, you're curious about them, what happens, how they feel, and I will be giving you all the tips and tricks and everything to expect, things that you can do to prepare and so forth okay so if that seems like a thing keep on watching hey guys welcome back to my channel now with my experience with brazilian waxes i've been through a bit i've been waxing for almost i would say Mm, two years now and it's the best decision i've ever made in my life <laughs> everybody knows that hair down there grows as soon as you step out of the shower you can just freshly shave and as soon as you step out you already feel the pricks if you are a shaver you know what i'm talking about i started to wax because i've always been curious about it but just scared to do it because i never really knew what to expect shaving just wasn't it for me like i couldn't deal with having to do extra care when it came to like razor bumps and discoloration and then the fear of cutting yourself and having to be in so many different positions and having to be in the shower for the longest periods of time. I wear the wigs and I glue down my lace fronts. So being in a hot shower for more than an hour is not gonna work. Yeah. My first tip is to find a reputable waxer. Finding a great waxer is a part of your experience and you do want your experience to be good. Like my waxer, her name is Kenya, and Kenya, if you're watching this, I love you, girl. Like, I just feel comfortable with her, and like, it doesn't even feel like a wax appointment. Like, she's like my waxer and my therapist all in one. There are very famous wax chains, waxing chains, like European Wax Center, UNIK Wax, and if you're in New York, Brazil's Waxing Center, but I used to go to the one in New York, and that's where I found my waxer. She's now independent. For a great place to start that is a great place to start for you just starting off with the chains would be good i didn't have the most great experiences with the chains with everything that occurs during your waxing appointment you do need that extra little um for that extra reassurance to come back really great waxer is going to make sure that you are up on the deets when it comes to your waxing make sure that you know every step of the process waxers that do put your comfortability is that a word your, that puts your comfort first are really great waxers to have so make sure that you are finding a reputable and very accommodating waxer i'm just gonna be 100 percent straight up with you a wax does hurt how much pain it brings you just depends on how high your pain threshold is like i can handle waxes but cramps i'm not doing it um you could kill me for all that wax appointment or waxing can bring you a lot of discomfort, AKA pain. First time waxers, it may be a little more painful than it is for frequent waxers. Your skin or your hair isn't like used to being pulled like that and your follicles are stronger than ever. So with shaving, it doesn't really do anything to your hair follicles, but with waxing, it actually gets to the root and rips it out so that it over time damages it and allows the hair to grow back thinner or like grow back less the more frequent you wax if you get what i'm saying now you set your wax appointment you know who you're going to you know that yeah shanice or jane or monica is gonna you know be the one handling you during your process and you want to know what do i do before i go first thing Please do not go in there with itty bitty hair or like itty bitty pricks thinking you're about to get waxed and everything's gonna come out. No, your hair has to be at least the size of a rice grain. Like, you know the little rice grains that you put in the pot to cook? You gotta make sure that your hair is that long before you even think about booking a, an appointment. 
last shave that should be like three to four weeks after your last shave and then you can go and get your wax and your hair should be long enough to get the wax so now that your hair is long enough and you kind of look like you know George the jungle down there it's time to start with your prepping step so one great prepping step is to exfoliate 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 whether that means using a scrub down there not a scrub that you're not gonna be scrubbing your lips and your you know your inner parts and stuff like that but just the skin around it I think that's called your vulva that place is called your vulva they're gonna um scrub the skin outside there where like most of your hair grows and make sure that it doesn't get in your hoo-ha. If you watch my hygiene video, you would know why that's a no-no. But getting a good scrub to exfoliate before your appointment allows for a better result when the waxer is done with you during your appointment. Next one is do not use any oils or any lotions in the area before you wax. It's best that you come freshly showered with no lotion or oils. Depending on what kind of wax you use, my wax to use is hard wax so that is the wax that doesn't really tug on the skin and just adhere to the hair if um your waxer is using hard wax it won't allow the wax to grab onto the hair as it needs to so just you not using oils and not using lotions will avoid that and help you get a better result most of these steps are just steps in order to make sure that you're getting the best results just like the waxer got to do their job, you got to do your job as well. You have a job before and after the appointment, but we're going to get to that soon. But please, please, please do not use any numbing creams, any other things, because, you know, it. first of all, it's just a waste of money because it doesn't work. And two, it can actually affect the work um, of the waxer being that it is, you know, a little lotion a little oil and won't allow the wax to adhere to the hair how it needs to so yeah depending on your pain threshold you can take ibuprofen or like an aspirin or any pain medication in order to like lessen the pain for you like 30 minutes before your appointment you could just pop one of those pillies and call it a day and see if that helps you i know you want to look cute all day and stuff like that but listen your waxer doesn't care if you're wearing the latest Victoria's Secret panties out, the latest Savage X Fenty collection. She doesn't care. Nice, breathable cotton underwear will be the best type of panties to wear. After you get your wax, they do apply products in order to make sure that you are like, you aren't getting any ingrowns or you're not getting any, you know, type of bumps or just to calm down the skin down there. That is all of the tips that I have for before. Now we're going to get into the low down dirty of what to expect. So you, you're you ready, you're at the place, you checked in, you tell them, yeah, my appointment's at 2 o'clock, you wait for your 2 o'clock appointment. Monica might be a little late, but she, she on her way. She on her way to, you know, fix you up. So nine times out of ten the people will ask you if you need to use the bathroom before their choice whether or not to use the bathroom it doesn't really affect the service but if you gotta pee go pee and if you don't gotta pee don't go pee don't force it they just asking you out of kindness just to make sure that you're comfortable and you know all your fluids are gone your waxer is ready for you she brings you to a room and she tells you get undressed from the waist down and nine times out of ten she'll give you like a little wipe to freshen yourself up with roughly three to five minutes later she'll knock on the door and be like are you ready and she'll come in with like a little waxing pan or there'll probably be one already in the room if the room is already set up let's just spill the tea here yes a complete stranger is going to be looking into your nether regions and be, she's going to be looking into your birth canal a lot of people tend to stray away from waxing because they're like scared of being judged because let's be really realistic about it we do tend to get discoloration we do tend to get razor bumps we do tend to get scars and a lot of people will be like will fear being judged by that but let me tell you your waxer has seen hundreds of vaginas a week so they've seen vaginas of women of all shapes sizes and color so it's nothing new to them unless they're like a new waxer and nine times, you do not want a new waxer. Do not get a new waxer. I like my waxers experience because they know what they're doing. So your waxer will clean you off, meaning that she will use like a little serum or a little cleanser in order to like clean you with a cotton pad just to make sure that the area has no oils or lotions. And then she's gonna probably sprinkle powder 
or something else to like dry out the area so that it's ready for waxing. Next thing that you will experience is a little bit of warmth and she's just gonna use like a little stick. The wax is on the stick and she'll go with the, with the the in the direction of the hair growth and then once it dries up, she'll like rip it to like go again so that it's ripping all the hair out. And yes, that can bring a bit of discomfort, but listen, it's only 30 minutes of discomfort for, for, for two to three weeks of bareness. You get what I'm saying? I'd rather take that over shade than any other day. But do expect your waxer to get in certain folds. So for us, well, at least most women, we do grow hair like, you know that little flab? Like that. I don't know. It's like that. It closes like that. And then like you pull it and it's like, like a little bit of hair right there yeah so she's gonna have to pull that in order to get to the hair there one thing that a waxer should do is always like make you aware of what she's going to do next so if she tells you i'm just gonna have to pull this to get the hair right there at least she's warning you and if you do not want her to do that that's perfectly fine just let her know that you don't want her to do that and if she does try to shame you for not wanting to do that or not wanting to remove the hair in that area then it's time for you to get a new waxer so do expect your waxer to you know use her hands to get to all the areas where there is hair there and if you don't feel comfortable you just let her know and she should be perfectly fine with it you will be asked to be in like different positions while you're waxing so whether that's the butterfly like if you're getting a brazilian that's from your your front to your butt crack so if you're getting a Brazilian, she's ready to do your butt. You'll probably be on your stomach, holding your butt cheeks, which is really awkward, but it gets all the hairs out. She'll probably ask you to do your knees to your chest, which is another way of making sure like all the hair in the under part of your, your whole region is hair free. After she's removed all the hair, she's going to apply a series of like oils or serums in order to make sure that you are good in that nether region in order to make sure that you're not getting any irritation to calm the skin down because nine times out of 10, you will experience, I don't know what it's called, but it's like little bumps on your skin from where the hair has been pulled out. And it's just temporary. It's only there for like a couple hours or at least 24 hours. And then it goes down once your skin has calmed down. After she's done, she's applied all the serum. She's applied all of everything to calm your skin down. You're gonna get up, you're gonna get out of your seat, and your vaginal area is gonna feel like you've been ran over by a truck. But it's okay. It's only gonna feel like that for like a couple of hours. I remember this one time, I got a wax way before work, and at work I had to stand, like it was no sand, and it was just so much. Like, I just, my, it was just, it was just so, I was uncomfortable the whole time. But I didn't let it show though, cause you know, I ain't no weak and you know, I was hurting. So I went and suggest, you getting a wax before you have to go to work or before you have to do any like strenuous activity or activity where you have to move around because your vaginal area will hurt and you will feel it every step every stride you take every move you make every breath you take you will feel it so for my first time waxers you may not be as bare as you need to be or you want to be um you may have like a little little itty bitty hairs coming through that's normal a lot of people expect like their first wax that oh i'm gonna be bare and it's not gonna grow for the rest of you know there are gonna be hairs that they can't get and that is only because due to shaving it doesn't get to the roots it doesn't get to the follicle so all of your hairs are going to be on different hair growth cycles from the sprouting to growth to the falling out of hair and the more you wax the more the cycle your hair will adjust to one cycle so that's why it's really great to not only wax once but just consistently keep on waxing once you start waxing you just got to keep on being consistent with it and you will see the results that you need to see or you want to see. And another thing is to expect a mini breakout down there your skin isn't going to be especially for first time waxers your skin isn't going to be used to the tugging and the pulling and all the stress that's being put on the hair so you are going to you know get those little bumps get those little breakouts and i just want to give you like two little products that i really recommend for those and just two maintenance products so that i do not get any ingrown hairs so i don't get any razor bumps 
So I'm gonna go get them and I'm gonna be right back. Cause I wasn't really planning to show you guys this, but since I'm making a video, I might as well show you guys, right? So in these products, you will see like a common ingredient and it's all just to make sure that everything is kept at bay, okay? The first day, I wouldn't recommend you to use any of these products, maybe the third or fourth day. And just wait until the skin calms down and you're not feeling sore and you know, the skin has given itself some time to heal because waxing is a form of exfoliation as well, if you didn't know. So for my girls with discoloration, it's really a great thing for you. Yeah. Just putting all onto the tea. The first thing I like to use is the 10 skin solution. Um, Listen, this has been around forever. I like this certain bottle because it's like a roll on so I can just like roll it on to the areas that I need. And this is roughly $12, so it's not expensive. Yeah, but I would recommend that you like test a little small area before you even think about using it. Cause I don't want you coming back to me and telling me, oh, my skin was too sensitive and my skin reacted. So use like a little test patch. And then after 24 hours, if there's no reaction, then you're free to use this. But I'm just showing you what works for me and probably will work for you. And whenever I use this, I don't get no razor bumps, no itching, no, no, none of that. Cause after waxing, you can itch. It's it's, it's normal. So another thing, I don't know if you will be able to find this. It is a bit stained because I've had this for the long, it took me like a long time to finish this or like even get to where it is right now. It's the Elate Repair Soothing Serum. So this is the one that I'll put on at least like the second day because it's only a soothing serum. And this is basically alcohol again, glycolic acid, lactic acid, willow bark extract, psilocytic acid, glycerin, and cellulose. cellulose? It's really great for like repairing the area, making sure that you are getting the exfoliation you need, but not too much of an exfoliation where it can irritate again. Um, and it's not too drying because it does have glycerin and cellulose. I don't know how to pronounce it, but yeah, it has a lot of those ingredients. So it's just something. Another product that I would use in order to like keep um like little bumps and stuff at bay because you know it's inevitable your skin is going through a lot of stress to keep bumps at bay are these two babies so this is a sephora salicylic clarifying serum and salicylic acid is actually i think it's a bha it's a bha and bhas are really great for like exfoliation and like breaking apart dead skin cells in order to get like dirt out so that's really, that's why it's used for like acne. Another one I have is uh, a BHA serum. So it's a better hydroxy acid. It's not like acid, acid to the point where it's gonna burn. And the only reason this will burn is if you like use it on the fresh wax. And I'm telling you, do not use it on the fresh wax. Wait till like third or fourth day that maybe you could jump one of these on. You thought you was gonna get a wax. <laughs> you thought you was gonna straight to the boom boom room. You got it all wrong. You gotta wait like at least 24 to 48 hours before you even think about, you know, giving you a little action. Exercising before you even think about running, before you think about doing any sweating or anything down there because sweat does bring bacteria and bacteria into new freshly opened pores and freshly exfoliated skin is a no-no and will just cause breakouts. So just make sure that you are staying away from the boom boom room sweat exercise anything that will cause you to like you know sweat down there produce sweat produce any form of liquid that seeps out of your pores okay so just make sure you are you know make sure you are staying out of those those actions i guess i don't know Whatever. last but not least i'm gonna give you the lowdown on the growth process so the growth process is you'll probably be there for the first first week to two weeks like if you're just starting waxing but me i could be there for like three weeks because i've been doing it so often and then that's when like i'll notice like a lot of hair coming up for new waxers i would give it one to two weeks of bareness before you start sprouting new hairs especially if you, your waxer isn't able to get all of the hairs you should experience more hair growth more sooner than later i would suggest that you always do your appointments at the beginning of the month um and then always make sure that like every beginning of the month you're getting your waxes because that's just an easier way to keep track of how much weeks i've been growing how many weeks that i need in order to like achieve this certain length and stuff that just makes it easier for you just give yourself like four to six weeks of growing so that means no shaving in between because shaving will just mess up the whole process and then when you go back to wax, you're gonna start from scratch. So you're gonna be starting from like when you first wax. 
So that is all the tips and tricks and all of what to expect during your wax appointment that I have for you guys. Um, if you guys did enjoy this video, please be sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and also turn on your post notifications. Ooh, what was that? Make sure that you turn on your post notifications so you don't miss when I post another video. I'll see you on my next one. Bye. What was that? All right, bye, guys.